supplies uh, we have another product review as you've seen in the mailbag we received this LCD uh, keypad shield so now I'm just going to do a short video of uh, how to use the shield and uh, as, as with the previous video for the joystick you'll be able to find uh, the code used for uh, this tutorial on uh, on a blog post associated with the with this uh, product review so uh, as you've seen in the mailbag this uh, LCD keypad came from icstations.com and uh, you can check the link down below uh, they have lots of different uh, boards like this and like the, the joystick board that we've we seen before now just if we look at the uh, build quality uh, everything looks to be pretty good the uh, LCD is held on to this uh, breakout board by row headers it's fairly solid they've even included some padding on this side so that the LCD isn't vibrating, isn't shaking that's pretty good uh, our potentiometer, uh, not sure whether that's for the backlight brightness yet or the contrast, we'll find out uh, that seems pretty good the switches they feel, they feel very solid, they, they feel like a good job have to say uh, it looks like yeah, there appears to be resistors down there so presumably the switches already have their resistance in them which would make sense, it would be nowhere for you to uh, add the resistance so that's good they've left the holes empty so you can expand the headers if you need to uh, that's better than them filling the pins because you might want to put right angled headers on or straight headers depending on what your application is so that's pretty good so all in all it seems like a seems like a good good construction uh, they've put a screen protector on so we'll take that off so that we can actually see what's happening okay so I have preloaded up this Arduino with uh, the hello world uh, demo for for an LCD so if you have downloaded your uh, uh, I forget what the name of the software is for the Arduino but uh, if you have that Arduino software in the example section under LCD you'll find a hello world program and that's what we're going to run now I haven't tested this so if this doesn't work it will be rather embarrassing maybe not for me maybe for IC stations it will be embarrassing but let's see what happens we have nothing Okay, I had to go get a screwdriver to fit this uh, potentiometer. So let's see if uh, we change this. What happens? Okay, so this is the contrast. So it's not the backlight, it's the contrast. As you can see, as I adjust it, contrast changes there. But we have no hello world. So, next thing to check is if the wiring uh, of this board matches the wiring of that Arduino sketch so I'm guessing it doesn't ok so uh, obviously it's not set up in the uh, configuration that uh, the guy who wrote the LCD hello world code for Arduino uh, intended it to be used so but it's it pretty straightforward I, uh, I I checked the pins with uh, with a multimeter and the RS pin on the LCD is now pin 8 um, the enable pin there's the enable pin is pin 9 on the Arduino digital pin 9 uh, and very simply but D4, D5, D6, D7 equal to pin 4, pin 5, pin 6 and pin 7 on your Arduino so you just need to uh, change the configuration line in the, at the top of the LCD code to uh, reflect these different pins and then it should work now that's what I've done and unless I've made a mistake this should now read hello world there we go hello world and we have a counter 
can see that. Uh, there you go. So, hello world, clearly on the LCD and the counter. Um, okay, so I'll include that code on um, in the blog post. It's only a minor uh, change to the original. Uh, so you know you, you'll be able to make that change yourself and uh, just just to make note I have a video on the basics of using an LCD screen in case you're wondering uh, about the enable pins and what the different pins of the LCD uh, actually do you can look up uh, my video on using a HD 44580 uh, LCD screen um, Okay, so now that we understand the LCD, we need to take a look at the buttons and understand how the buttons work. And the buttons are all arranged so that they uh, create voltage dividers. And as a result, there is only one output pin for all of the all of the switches. Apart from this, this is the reset switch, this one here. So this is connected to the reset pin of the Arduino. So when you push reset here resets the Arduino. Uh, obviously because you can't reach the reset switch on the Arduino board itself anymore because you have the shield on it. So uh, each of these buttons, by pushing these buttons uh, it's assumed that you're only going to push one at a time so you, you might only push left and then push select. So it's assumed that you're only going to do that and when you do that, when you push one button you create a specific voltage divider. You read that with your analog pin and in that way you can uh, determine uh, determine which button has been pushed. So I'll show you how that works now. Put in the power. Okay, so we have four volt or we have five volts here basically. So if we push one of the buttons, maybe I'll just if I can get this that better. Okay, so we have 5 volts. Push the select button. There we have 3.5 volts. We push the left button. 2.33 volts. Up button. 0.65. Down button. 1.49. Right button. 0. And from that we can come up with a code. So we know that uh, on our analog pin, our reference voltage is uh, five volts. So we have five volts divided by one thousand twenty-four bits. Then um, to account for each switch, we take uh, we do the measurement, and we say if the measurement is less than such a value, it is. The uh, whichever button, like we'll take uh, the right button, so it's zero volts. The next button uh, is the up button, which is 0.65. So if we say uh, for if the measurement value is less than 0.24 volts, then it has to be the right button. None of the other buttons will give you less than 0.24 volts. Then if uh, so if it doesn't pass that one then you would test it see if it was less than 0.95 volts that would be the up button so up button is 0.65 so if it wasn't if it wasn't below 0.24 and it is below 0.95 then it has to be the up button and you continue to do that so values that you might use and I'm going to use those in the uh, example are the right button less than 50, the up button less than 195, the down button less than 380, the left button less than 555 and the select button is less than 790. So if you use those values uh, you should have control of all of your buttons with only one pin. It's a brilliant way to save pins on the device.
So here I've uploaded some code created by a guy called Mark Bramwell and it's basically just code to test the buttons. So we've implemented the the uh, the values in the analog uh, read for analog zero that uh, we just discussed. So now when I push the button, see here this has changed to select and that is correct, this is the select button. And what's happening, the analog pin zero is reading the voltage that has been created by the voltage divider when we push this button and uh, then it's been displayed on the screen. Very simple. So if I push the left button, left, push the up button, up, down button, down, push the right button, right. Okay, so we've tested the code. Uh, I'll link to this code in the description as well. It's very useful. And from that, you should be uh, very easily able to uh, uh, learn how to control your robots or whatever you want. Okay, so as uh, you've probably guessed from the last video, I'm going to try and end these product reviews with an example of how the product can be used for uh, something uh, related to the blog, and uh, that usually means uh, a radio controlled tractor or a vehicle of some sort. So, in this case, I have finished off our. Uh, our LCD shield video with uh, something special. It's the introduction of, if you can read it there, our Hitachi ZX210 from ZX210. So uh, this is the Hitachi ZX210 from the previous product review video. I've added a second joystick to give us uh, control for uh, all the different functions on the excavator. Uh, as before, I have the XP and we have our shield. And in our shield we have a menu here, Hitachi Z axis, just telling us the vehicle we're using. And we're currently in track control mode. So if we use our buttons here, we flick off, now we have boom control. So. There's a good example, I think, of uh, of how you could use this uh, this screen for um, for this LCD shield to control your different uh, models. And when I do the video for this uh, new excavator, I hope to have this controller able to switch between vehicles. So hopefully, we'll be able to drive the tractor along with the excavator on the low loader and unload it all from this controller. Without needing to, um, without needing to move really, so we should be able to select our vehicles and uh, control them for the controls. So I hope you liked that video. I hope you liked the video, and um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, place them below in the YouTube links or on the forum would be uh, better. And I'll try and upload this uh, this code for for the control of the excavator on the blog post related to this product review. And if you've any uh, uh, any comments or suggestions on how to improve the uh, these product review videos or, or the mailbag videos or any other type of video, just uh, leave a comment and uh, hopefully we'll be able to address any issues you might have. And um, that's everything. Thanks very much for watching.